It's Gail from Bernie of Naperville. I wanted to know if you had a second to talk about quilting in the hoop because uh, quilting in the hoop is very easy and sometimes you have to make a couple of adjustments depending on what kind of designs there are. So we're going to talk about tension, we're going to talk about different threads, and we're going to do two easy stitch outs. Let's get started. All right, I'm working here on my Bernina 770 and I'm just going to use the preloaded designs on the machine. And we're going to work in the quilting folder, which is folder number one. It's a different number on some of the different Berninas. The first design that we're going to use is number 10. Number 10 is a single line stitch out. But I want to talk a little bit before we get started about what is expect what the embroidery machine is expecting. So the embroidery machine is interpreting this design as an embroidery design, which means the tension setting up here is adjusted for embroidery rather than quilting. Cause you know, with quilting, you want your stitches balanced. And on purpose, I'm using a cotton purple up top and a cotton pink in the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is take our tension adjustment and I'm gonna go up to about four and a half and that's gonna tighten my upper tension. I'm also gonna use my black bobbin case, not my yellow high tension bobbin case. So this is about how I would have my machine set up for regular quilting if I were just using the Bernina stitch regulator or a free motion foot. I'm not gonna do anything special with stitching this out other than the fact that I now need to tell my machine that I'm gonna use foot number 26, which is my embroidery foot. And now I'm just gonna say, okay, I'm ready to stitch it out. And now I'm gonna put my hoop on, put my foot on, and we'll get started. Sometimes it's hard to squeeze the batting, backing, and top in a hoop. So I'm using aqua mesh stabilizer, and then I'm gonna lay my little quilt project on top. This would be a good application to use the basting function if you were doing a larger quilt. Um, I don't, and this is a technique called floating. I typically don't float things if there's a lot of embroidery stitches in it because you don't get a uh, good quality stitch out. However, uh, for this application, because it's a smaller design and there's not, it's not very dense, floating is perfectly fine. So I've got my hoop on, I'm selecting the stitch to get ready, and now I am gonna show you how you would do the basting. So I'm gonna do a little basting box and the basting box is gonna go just around the design. And I'm gonna slip my fabric in here, get it nice and centered, make it look pretty. All right, so that's gonna hold it in place. And now I'm just gonna get started by pressing my start button. And I'm just doing this little basting box to keep everything in, in the hoop and this basting stitch will come out after we're done. And now it's time to do our quilting stitch. Now let's have a look. I'm gonna trim my little threads, take my hoop off, and let's look at what's going on. Under here, so now if we look, this is the bobbin side, and I don't see any of my purple thread poking through. See that? And then here's my purple side. This is the top side. I don't see any of my pink thread poking through. All right, so I would call that a success and that's how you adjust your tension. And so we're gonna do that for all of our quilting designs. Now, let's 
take a look at a different type of quilting motif. Okay, I've selected a different kind of design now. So this one is a triple straight stitch. And instead of just going la 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 la, like you saw that other design, this one is gonna sew over itself in certain spots. So when that happens, I don't always wanna see a bunch of thick thread. So I'm gonna thread my machine up with a hundred weight silk thread and this is going to be awesome. So I'm putting this in the top and the bottom and I'm keeping my tension adjustments at the 4.5. All right, let's see this awesome thing and let's get started. It's kind of hard to capture it on camera, but this silk thread is really fine. It's like hair. And so hopefully this will give us a really cool looking stitch for this particular design. All right, the machine's threaded, the design is chosen. All I need to do is get stitching. And just so I wanted to show you, I actually hooped up the batting, backing, and top. Um, this one requires not a, it doesn't require a basting stitch to get started. We've just squeezed it right in the hoop because um, this design was a little bit smaller. But let's see what this guy is gonna look like. Our thing is done and it's really pretty. I could see doing, I, I'd really like to do like a whole cloth table runner or something like that with this because you can see how absolutely beautiful that is. Now that is the silk thread and then on the back side, I mean you can't tell the back from the front with those adjustments that we made. So that's it. Now you know how to quilt in the hoop. There are no excuses now. You know how to quilt in the hoop. There are no excuses now, just like I said. <laughs> well, I hope you learned something. So uh, don't forget that we offer many tutorials on our YouTube channel. It's easy to remember. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And if you want, please comment, like, subscribe, and ring the little bell, and you'll get an alert every time we upload a new video, just like this one. So in the meantime, happy sewing and happy quilting. Thanks.